Today, I want to answer a question I've been wondering about for years, and that is, what cheese makes the best mac and cheese? So I bought a lot of cheese and decided to run a couple of experiments where I could finally do some side-by-side -side taste test, and what I found was pretty interesting. That's the best so far, no doubt about it. However, what cheese makes the best mac and cheese is a pretty loaded question. Not only are there hundreds of cheeses, there are also so many different ways you can make a mac and cheese at home. So today's experiments are specifically focused on stovetop macaroni and cheese, which is the recipe that I use the most. However, most of what we learn today should be pretty applicable to almost any mac and cheese recipe you are making. In test number one, we're doing a cheddar cheese showdown to see which one tastes the best. And then based on my observations from test number one, a little bit of dryness, Two is ultra smooth. We did something different for test number two, where I found my perfect ratio of melting to a flavoring cheese and the ultimate recipe that I will be using going forward. Now we'll get to those tests in a second, but this wouldn't be an Ethan Jabowski video if I didn't zoom back out and explain a little bit of mac and cheese theory first. So let me tell you about the four variables that make up the mac and cheese equation. Whether your mac and cheese is made from a box, uses 16 different cheeses, is made with milk or just pasta water, stirred in a pot, or baked in a casserole dish, at a fundamental level, it always comes back to one goal. And the goal of mac and cheese is to create an emulsion of cheese and a warm liquid. And this emulsion is spread throughout our pasta, delivering cheesy goodness in every bite. And at this fundamental level, every mac and cheese recipe really boils down to just these four variables. One, the cheese, two, the liquid, three, the emulsion stabilizers, and last, of course, fourth is the pasta, typically macaroni. Now, in my head, this is how I visualize it. The cheese and the liquid are the primary components used to create the emulsion. However, in most recipes, there are some type of emulsion stabilizer. Examples are sodium citrate, starches like corn or pasta, acid, a butter or roux, or even xanthan gum are all ways that can be used to stabilize or thicken your cheese liquid emulsion, which helps that sauce become silky smooth and stay silky smooth as it spreads over our pasta. And the ratio of these ingredients could yield all different types of tasting mac and cheeses. And using this equation, I mean, we could essentially make four different videos here. First, we could do what's the best type of liquid for mac and cheese, looking at water versus milk versus heavy cream. Secondly, we could do what's the best way to stabilize a mac and cheese, doing sodium citrate versus cornstarch or evaporated milk. And third, we could do is macaroni even the best pasta for mac and cheese? I mean, look at all this potential cheese sauce that the pipe brigade can hold. However, today's video is all about the cheese. So let's hop into test number one, what cheddar makes the best mac and cheese. For test number one, I made four batches of three ingredient mac and cheese with 40 grams of pasta, 40 grams of evaporated milk, and 40 grams of cheese, except I used different cheddars. So as a control, we have 40 grams of Velveeta, which melts well due to that higher moisture content and added sodium citrate. Next is 40 grams of medium cheddar, 40 grams of sharp cheddar, and 40 grams of extra sharp cheddar. And we'll explain a little bit about the differences after we do this test. So to make each, I salted and boiled all of the pasta at once and then strained that off and popped it into bowls. Then I made each mac and cheese. I added a portion of the cooked pasta down over medium low heat and added in that evaporated milk. Once it just started to simmer, I added the cheeses and as you can see, it melts really well with that evaporated milk. And after each batch was finished, I just added them to a container and placed them into a water bath to try to keep them all the same temperature for testing. I brought all the mac and cheeses over to the cutting board and right before testing, I gave them one last stir up as the sauce had kind of slipped down to the bottom. So it may make sense why no one's decided to video test this because it is pretty annoying to make four micro batches of mac and cheese while filming multiple camera angles. I literally feel like I worked up a sweat, but we got them all done. They all should be right around the same temperature because of that water bath. I'm super interested to see what these taste like. We have the processed, medium, the sharp cheddar and the extra sharp cheddar. Let's blindfold up and see what these taste like side by side. In this test, these are the questions I'm looking to answer. One, how does the texture, aroma, and taste of the mac and cheese change based on the age of the cheddar? And two, which mac and cheese is best overall? Does 
doesn't smell super strong. It smells cheddar-ish though. Mac and cheese number one tasted cheddary and was really solid, but it wasn't until I got to mac and cheese number two that I realized the texture was actually quite different. That's definitely the Velveeta. Tastes exactly like what I know Velveeta tastes like. Texture alone on the Velveeta number two, it's so good. Like that alone, it's not very cheesy, but the texture is so, so good. Also, if I go back to one, there is a tiny bit of graininess to number one. Yeah, and way more flavor, like way more cheddar flavor in one. And obviously number two is not cheddar, that's Velveeta. Now, as it relates to taste, the tang of cheddar was way more noticeable along with the cheddar aroma and the Velveeta in comparison is pretty boring. And this continues with bowl number three. Not super strong. One was definitely more tangy and intense. Number three is very, very mild. Then when I got to that last bowl, the aromas and taste of the cheese were off the charts, but it also had that same dry texture. I think this is the strongest one. Very cheddary, tangy, kind of has that like, it, it almost does have that kind of dryness of a, like a, a, you know, an aged cheddar. Number one and four, there is kind of this little bit of dryness, baby bit of graininess. Two is ultra smooth. That's the Velveeta, has to be. And then three, I'm guessing, is probably the, the younger, mild cheddar. Not super grainy, but also just not very flavorful. So sharp, Velveeta, mild, and extra sharp. Let's see what we got here. So, sharp cheddar, got it right. Processed, Velveeta, medium, extra sharp cheddar. So all of these were good mac and cheeses, but Velveeta processed cheese, by far the best texture. But it, it definitely is missing that, that cheesy, cheddary flavor that you really do come through in an extra sharp or sharp cheddar. So for the second half of this video, this is the problem I wanna solve. How can I get the smooth texture of Velveeta with the increased aroma and taste of the extra sharp cheddar? And more specifically, what is the optimal ratio for the melting cheese versus a flavoring cheese? So in test number two, I made four more batches of mac and cheese with different percentages of the extra sharp cheddar in order to find the best ratio of melting cheese like an American to a strongly flavored cheese such as an extra sharp or aged cheddar. And I found a clear winner. Same great texture on that one, clear bump up in flavor. Before we get there though, we should answer this question first. What is the difference between a good melting cheese and a good flavoring cheese? So here's a useful Venn diagram that outlines cheeses that will be good melting bases for mac and cheese versus some flavoring cheese. And as always, in the middle, there are some overlap here. So what makes a good base cheese? Well, we think it boils down to these three qualities. First, it melts easily. Generally, these are going to be higher water content or softer cheeses like a young cheddar, mozzarella, or American, which as we talked about, also has some emulsifiers built into it. And as noted in the food lab, young moist cheeses tend to melt a whole lot better than older drier ones. And in fact, some cheeses like feta or halloumi have a protein structure so tight that no amount of healing will cause them to melt. And others, like we've talked about, have emulsifiers added to them to ensure they melt smoothly at low temperatures without breaking. Now, quality number two is the flavor is not overpowering, or alternatively, it does have a dominant flavor or color, but you're looking for that flavor or color. The Velveeta and the medium cheddar in the first test we did melted really well, but the taste was really boring side by side to the sharp and extra sharp cheddars, which is why I wanna pair them together in the next test. And quality number three, ideally a melting cheese isn't super expensive, since you'll have to use more of it to create the bulk of the sauce. Now, if you want to use a cheese that isn't as melty as your base cheese, like an aged cheddar or Parmesan, just make sure you add something that will help it emulsify into that sauce, like the evaporated milk I used in the test above. Other options, like we talked about, are buying other emulsifiers like sodium citrate powder, adding cornstarch to your grated cheese, or sneaking in some American cheese or Velveeta, which already has some of that sodium citrate added. And what I wanna see in this next test is will just 25% of the Velveeta stabilize and get rid of that grainy dry feeling that I was feeling in the 100% extra sharp flavor. 
Now, what does make a good flavor adjusting cheese? And ultimately, this is up to you. These cheeses are less about the texture, although obviously you still want to melt them into the sauce, but they're more about adding or changing the flavor. And to add complexity to your mac and cheese, think about adding a cut of hard or aged cheeses, smoked cheeses, or even funky or strong flavored cheeses like moldy or sheep or goat's milk instead of cow's milk. Ultimately, just use this Venn diagram and you can experiment with all sorts of different cheeses in your macaroni and cheese. But of course, it is time to do our test and figure out what ratio of flavoring cheeses to melting cheeses is the best. So based on the first test, the 100% extra sharp cheddar cheese was just too sharp and the flavor was a little bit too strong. It was also a little dry and grainy from a texture. So by adding some Velveeta, I'm hoping that one, the atom sodium citrate should help the texture. And secondly, the more neutral flavor should round out the harshness of the extra sharp cheese. And what I wanna know here is what is that optimal ratio for Velveeta to the extra sharp cheddar? So for test number two, I made four more batches of three ingredient mac and cheese. 40 grams of pasta, 40 grams of evaporated milk, 40 grams of cheese. And as a control, again, I used 40 grams of Velveeta, then cut the remaining with 25%, 50%, and 75% extra sharp cheddar. I repeated that exact same procedure as the first test by boiling the pasta, adding a portion to the pan, tossing in the evaporated milk, bringing that to a simmer, and then just tossing in the cheese before creating that silky smooth cheese sauce. Again, I added each macaroni to a bowl that I kept into a water bath to keep them warm, and right before testing, gave them one last stir. How will they taste? Let's see. I'm so ready for this test, timed it perfectly with lunch. So we had the 0%, 25%, 50%, and 75% extra sharp. I'm gonna blindfold up still, but I don't wanna mix these up. I actually want to go down in order to really compare and contrast as we come up to this higher range to see how the taste, the smell, and the texture of these mac and cheese changes. Good. Okay, processed cheese first. That's the beautiful texture right there. Again, the taste is solid, but not super interesting. So let's move up to 25% extra sharp cheddar. Same great texture on that one, clear bump up in flavor. There's just that tanginess, the, the, the cheddar-y aroma, big, big uptake in flavor here in number two. And the texture, there's like no graininess, no dryness at all. Let's move up to the 50-50. That's the best so far, no, no doubt about it. Mm. Number three, definitely the best. Best flavor, super cheddary, tangy, and then the texture. It has a, a hint of that dryness that we learned about in the first test, but I think you could just add maybe a little bit more evaporated milk or maybe a little bit more liquid and probably dissipate that even more. Number three, I think by far my favorite of these first three. All right, let's move on to the last one, 75% extra sharp. This, I'm pretty curious to see if this one is, the texture is still as good as three. The 50-50 texture was still really, really good. Yeah, it, it has that kind of dryness, little bit of graininess to it. It's still, the flavor is so good though. I'm gonna kind of come back through a little bit. So for me here, my favorites are definitely the 50-50 and the 75% ratio. If I had to pick between one of these two, I would go with the 50-50. The texture is still super creamy smooth. There's none of that graininess. There's like a tiny little hint of dryness compared to these two, but the flavor you get with the 50-50 blend of the extra sharp knocks off these two up the charts. And when you go back to just a pure 100% American processed Velveeta cheese, you realize it's not all that interesting in terms of flavor. The texture, amazing, but not all that interesting in terms of flavor. That being said, if you like very sharp cheeses, this is still really, really good too. A 75% extra sharp 
it does have a little bit more of that dryness and a touch of that graininess that we learned about kind of in that first test. But if you're looking to add in some stronger flavoring cheeses and still want that really great creaminess, I think that 50 to 75% Anywhere in there, you're probably gonna be pretty happy with. If you want the texture to be a little bit smoother, for me, I'm, I'm sitting right here on that 50-50. So in conclusion, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I've enjoyed lots of mac and cheese the past two days, so I'm gonna go get a grab a workout, go for a little run. Uh, we'll have kind of a recipe and equation breakdown up on the website if you guys wanna get a summary of this video, but really hope you maybe try this out for yourself. Do some different tests with different melting cheeses, flavoring cheeses, it's kind of a lot of fun, good weekend activity. But anyway, that will wrap it up for me in this one. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace, y'all.